love him with all my heart. I am just so honored to just to be a part of this celebration as we thank God for this awesome man of God that God has raised up. Let's thank God for Bishop Stephen Bennett. Thank God for you. First Lady, we honor you tonight. We just wanted to be here to share, to appreciate what God is doing in and through you. 25 years. That's a blessing within itself. That's a blessing within itself, especially when you pastor in black folk for 25 years. That's a blessing. <laughs> But the awesome job, and of course, he was such a great asset, even as overseer of Michigan for us, the full gospel. And so we'll never forget the contributions that you have made, uh, even to our vision and what God has assigned to our hands. So we appreciate you so, so, so very, 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 very much. And we're just grateful for all who share tonight. Good to see my big brother is in the house, Bishop C.L. Morton. I uh, thank God for him. We appreciate him so very, very, very much. Who poured into my life at a young age, and I believe I am what I am uh, because he had to approve my first sermon. My first sermon. He said, Don't you make no Morton shame now. Don't you do that. And uh, I am so glad that I've stayed focused on the assignment that God has given. And it's just certainly good uh, to see him sharing in the house of the Lord tonight. And then one of my great spiritual sons uh, who encouraged us and made sure, because he knows I uh, really, if I'm, you know, I really like to stay in the South for the, for the winter. Uh, but uh, but he, he said this was necessary to be here, and I wanted to be here to celebrate with you. But I thank God for Bishop Greg Davis, uh, one of my great spiritual sons. And I appreciate the job that he's doing. Good to see Dr. Mormon in the house tonight, my friend. Thank God for you, all those who share tonight. And, of course, thank God for Pastor James and Lady James singing Lady James. Thank God for you. We appreciate you. The list goes on and on of those who share tonight, and we're just here to give God the glory. We appreciate our music director from Changing a Generation who shares with us tonight, uh, Brother Jalen Smith, and also our armor bearer and assistant, uh, Pastor Emmanuel Spurlock. But I just believe tonight as we, and I was talking, of course, with Bishop in the back, and we're just praying for complete healing. I know God can do it. I am, I am a living witness because I know what God did for me in 2006. So it's, it's no secret what God can do. What he's done for Paul Morton, he'll do the same thing for you. And you got to know it, you got to believe it as we give God the glory and thank God for what he's done. And currently Elder Sanders, great job tonight. Uh, in leading the way, we appreciate you so very, very, very much. How many of you come for a blessing? Give me a pure and holy pastor. Kim, give me one pure and holy pastor. Give me one magnificent obsession. Give me one glorious ambition for my life to know and follow hard after you. Give me one pure and holy passion. Give me one magnificent obsession. Give me one glorious ambition for my life, my life. 
to know and follow hard after you. To know and follow hard after to you. To know and follow hard after you. To grow as your disciple in the truth. Just speak oh, in this Lord, place. We give you glory in this place oh Spirit God. of the living God, just fall we afresh on us. Jesus, your anointing will destroy Lord, every yoke. We give you praise now in the mighty matchless name, name of Jesus, Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Hallelujah. Well, tonight I want to go to the book of Genesis. Genesis, the 40th chapter. Thank y'all so much. See some singing folk, I tell you. Genesis, the 40th chapter, and I'm going to begin reading at verse 5. Just believe in this season as we celebrate this great man of God and what God is doing in and through him. I want you to know also that there's a blessing in store for you. But before we read, we make a confession in our ministry on how we receive the word of God because I take the word of God seriously. In fact, for kingdom people, we must understand that this is our kingdom constitution that supersedes the U.S. Constitution because sometimes they'll get things mixed up in the U.S. Constitution. But what I love about God's word, it's his word and his word changes not. So I need you to stand, lift your Bibles, your iPads, your iPhones. If you don't have any of those, just place your hand over your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And repeat after me, if you will, if I receive this kingdom constitution, the word of God with my mind only, this word will be dead for me. This word will not help me, but if I receive this word, this kingdom constitution with the spirit over my mind, over my emotions, over my fleshly desires, this word will be life for me. Lord, I don't need religious form and fashion. I need life. Look at somebody and tell them receive life. Uh, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord as we look at Genesis, the 40th chapter beginning at verse 5. Genesis 40 beginning at verse 5. It says, and they dreamed a dream, both of them. Each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream. The butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. 
And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. I want to talk just for a few moments because I believe you've come out on this Friday night to celebrate this man and this woman of God that God has raised up. You've come out tonight to share. I just want to talk about how to make your dreams come true. Now, before I preach this tonight, I just need to make sure that I'm in the right house. You know, sometimes, you know, the, the spirit, if he'll send me another way, if I am, am, I'm in the wrong house for this, I need to ask a question before I preach this tonight. Are there any dreamers in the house? I, I just need to be clear on that because I just believe that you need to have a dream because without a dream, without a vision, you perish. So I wanted to talk about tonight how to make your dreams as we celebrate Bishop and Lady Bennett, how to make your dreams come true. Let me share with you one of the main reasons why Joseph was so successful in his dreaming because he definitely was a dreamer. There are some conditions that must be met before you make your dreams come true. So we have a good example before us. We have Joseph before us, and we know that Joseph was a great dreamer. Joseph was an anointed dreamer. Not only was he a dreamer authorized by God, but he was also an interpreter of dreams. Not only his dreams, but the dreams of others. Oh, he was familiar with his dream. He knew about his dream. He knew about his dream because God showed him clearly what his life, what his destiny was all about. In fact, he got so excited about his dream that he shared his dream with his brothers. That one day you'll be bowing down before me. I saw this. Oh, God showed me this in a dream. And I saw me way up here and you down there. And I, ooh, God was speaking to me. Now, the first lesson you need to learn, dreamers, you can't share your dream with everybody. Because there are some people that do not want your dream to come true. In fact, there are some dream killers out there who do not want you to succeed, who do not want you to be blessed, but you can't worry about them. And that's what I loved about Joseph. Joseph decided, even though he was clear on his destiny, even though he was clear on where God was taking him, he still shared in other people's dreams to make sure that their dreams came to pass. But how is this going to happen? Well, we see, we see Joseph, and he is so busy, and that's why his father loved him so much. He was just faithful to his father. Whatever his father told him to do, he was faithful. He was dedicated in that area. In fact, his father on this particular day sends him out, go, I need you to take this message to your brothers. I need you to go get your brothers. I need to talk to your brothers. I need you to go share this message with them. And, of course, that's all Joseph wanted to do. He just wanted to please his daddy. All right, daddy, I'll go. I'll go and do what you told me to do and guess what he goes and they see Joseph coming 
Instead of the brothers saying, here comes Joseph, hey, here comes our brother Joseph, they look and say, here comes that dreamer. Thinks he's all of that. Look at him. Look how he walks. Act like he's so much. Yeah, yeah, just the dreamer, just the dreamer. And they saw him coming, and they decided that they needed to get rid of Joseph. All I'm, all I'm doing, I'm just bringing a message from daddy, but, but, but they decided we need to get rid of Joseph. In fact, they really wanted to kill him, but they said that would be a little bit too much. But what we will do, we will throw him in a pit. We'll sell him to some Egyptians. Thinks his dreams are going to come true. How's your dream? going to come through in a pit. They sell him, they sell him to the Egyptians and now they take him to Egypt. He never thought that he would end up in Egypt. But they take him to Egypt and he is now placed in a big house, a big really business house. And he becomes a slave in Potiphar's house. A slave. Now this is a man who had a dream. God showed him how powerful he was going to be. And here he is now, a slave in Potiphar's household. And I'm sure he had to look up to God and said, Now God, I know you've been with me in my dream, but you sure didn't show me this. In my dream. But how many of you know God can't really show you everything in your dream? Because some of us would turn around and say, no, thank you, Lord. I I'm sure in the 25 years, God, if you'd have just showed me everything 25 years ago, no, no, thank you, Lord. If I got to go through this pit and I got to go through that pit, no, thank you, Lord. So God, he lets you take one day at a time. He lets you come out of one pit and you get the victory. You may have to go into another one, but he brings you out of that one. You may have to go through another one and pretty soon you say, Lord, I know. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I do know all things are going to work together for my good. So here he is now. He could be bitter, but he's a slave in Potiphar's household. And Potiphar is watching him because Joseph has had a gift. He has a gift as it relates to dealing with people. He knows how to deal with people. He's, he's a good administrator, good businessman, operated in excellence. And guess what? Potiphar puts him over the whole household. Now, now you got to remember there were some other Egyptian people born in Egypt. Here comes a slave to Egypt, and he is placed over all of the people who live in Egypt that work in the house because I love Joseph here even though he found himself working. Do you know what his desire was? He wanted to participate in Potiphar's dream. I could be bitter over here, but, but I really want to help you organize your house right because it's just, it's just not right. There's some things that are out of order, and I know how to bring it into order. And he served Potiphar's household to the best of his ability, and God blessed his efforts with great success. And it was because of his faithfulness that he was placed in charge of this household, making his dream come true. Here comes Potiphar's wife. Now Joseph's trying to do his job. That's all I want to do, man. I, I got a dream. I know God showed me that something's going to happen in my life. And she's sneaking in this big old house, checking Joseph out. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And finally, she got enough nerve to go and talk to Joseph and said, Joseph, I, I just can't take it no more. I just, man, I be watching you every day. Ooh, 
you a good looking young man. Listen, Joseph, I know, I know that this is my husband's house, and I, I know he's let you be over this house, and you're handling a lot of the business in this house, but we could actually slip away in one of these rooms. My husband won't even know where we are. Joseph, I, I just need to be with you just for a little while. Just let me be with you for a little while. And, of course, Joseph said, no, no Mrs. Potiphar, I really, I really can't do that. I know you may not understand, but I am I'm working on a dream. I know I, I didn't expect to be here, but I'm, I'm working on a dream. And there was one thing. I may not be clear on a lot of things right now, but there's one thing I'm clear on. You ain't in my dream. What, what you have to watch for in life, you have to watch for people who ain't in your dream. Don't just hook up with everybody. Don't, don't be involved with everybody if they're not supposed to be a part of what you're doing in this season. Joseph was saying, I got too much to do, and I'm sorry, Mrs. Potiphar, you just ain't in, in my dream. And you know, Mrs. Potiphar, she got upset. How dare you turn me down? Look at me. How dare you? I got money. I'm successful. I look good. How dare you turn me down? And Joseph, man, he ran out of the room. He ran out of the room. And guess what? She's running after him, grabs his robe, tears the robe. Come back here. Come back here. But Joseph, man, he gone. Hey. Hey, rip my robe, whatever you got to do, but baby, I'm out of here. And so now, Mrs. Potiphar, she goes, she goes to her husband, the very one she was going to play on, and says, honey, you need to do something with Joseph. He got out of the way with me. He grabbed me, raped me. And I mean, Mr. Potiphar got upset. Now, I know he didn't. I done gave this boy a job. I mean, he came from another country. I put him over this household. He was nothing but a slave. He's going to jail. Yeah. Joseph didn't even have time to defend himself. You're going to jail. How dare you do this to me? Can't you see Joseph in handcuffs and as he's headed to jail. I know he had to look up to God one more time and say, Lord, I know you gave me a dream, but this sure wasn't in my dream. But while, while I'm here, jailer, I, I, I know you don't know me, but this, this jail is not organized right. Ah, uh, you, 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 you got criminals in here, but, but they can break out of here. You, 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 it's just unorganized. It's, 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 not, it's not right. Just allow me to participate in your dream. I know you want a good jail. You want a good prison. You want, you want a prison that represents what you're all about. Let me help you do what you need to do. Guess what? Joseph found favor. In fact, in Genesis 39, beginning at verse 21, this is what the Bible says. And I want you to hear this because some of you, you may have a dream. And right now, it may look like it's a little difficult. But this is what the Bible says. But the Lord was with Joseph. Wait a minute, I thought he was in jail. But the Lord was with Joseph. How, how God, are you going to be with him in jail? Because God will be with you wherever he is and he will stand by you. The Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor, favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. I'm here to tell you, ain't nothing like favor, y'all. When, when God gives you favor, that's why some people are jealous of you. 
Ain't no need of you being jealous of people when God gives you favor. If he gives you favor, he gives you favor, and ain't nothing nobody can do about it. In fact, why don't you just look at somebody in case they don't know you. Just, just look at them and just say favor, favor 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 and look what happens when 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 God when God gives favor in verse 22 the Bible says and the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hands all the prisoners that were in the prison and whatsoever they did there he was the doer of it look they, I mean I mean the keeper of the prison was so impressed with Joseph he said listen I'm putting you in charge of the whole prison here's the keys every cell I want you to be in favor favor I'm supposed to be locked up but I'm not even locked up I got all the keys I got all the keys favor 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 first 23 says, and the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. Why was all of this happening? It's right there in this verse. It says, because the Lord was with him. But the Lord was with him. Some people are wondering why you're making it because they said, you just look ordinary. You just look like your average, but they don't know the Lord is with you and when the Lord is with you nobody nowhere can stop you when the Lord is with you that's why you got to know him for yourself ah, listen I want you to see the example why Joseph's was experiencing all of these great things in his life and it will remind you and let you know how to make your dream come true. Do you know why he was being so successful at every stage of his life? Was because he shared in somebody else's dream. God can't use selfish people. If all you see is what you want and you can't see nobody else and you won't help nobody else, I'm here to tell you, if you want your dreams to come true, you got to participate in somebody else's dream. Why don't you look at somebody, tell them participate, participate. I believe that somebody came tonight because you could have stayed home on this Friday night, but I believe you came to participate in somebody else's dream you came because he participated in your dream and he gave you a word and I know you could have said I'll see you Sunday but somebody came tonight to participate ah, I thank God I learned the key to success in life I've learned how to participate in somebody else's dream. Uh, why am I here tonight? Why am I here tonight in November? Why am I here tonight in the cold? Because this man participated in my dream and I came to say thank you because I come to participate in your dream. Participate, participate. You gotta participate. You gotta participate in somebody else's dream. Here's Joseph now. He's in prison. He's got all the keys. And while he's in charge of the prison, two prisoners, influential prisoners are placed in jail. The king's baker and the king's butler. Both of them are placed in jail for offending the king. Now that's one thing you wasn't supposed to do. I mean, you're working in the palace and the crime against you is offending the king. That was an immediate death sentence. 
And here Joseph is, he develops a relationship with them. He's got all the keys, and every day he'd walk by, and they would be laughing and talking. I'm the king's butler, the king's baker. How you doing today? And all oh, they'd be joking. They would be having fun. But then one day he came by, and both of them were sad. I mean, these, these fellows, they were always happy, always laughing, always talking. But both of them were sad. Joseph looks at them and says, what's the problem, fellas? What's going on today? Why y'all got your head down? You know how men are. They don't want to talk. It's all right. It's all right. But Joseph said, uh-uh, something's wrong. I can feel that there's something wrong. And so finally, they begin to talk to Joseph, and they told Joseph, listen, listen, man, we, we can't figure this out. All of a sudden, we've been dreaming, and we've been dreaming, but, but, but we don't understand these dreams. And, and every time we close our eyes, the dream comes back. We're afraid to go to sleep because every time we see the same dream over and over again, and I could see Joseph's eyes getting big and said, dream, dream? Don't you know that's my gift? I interpret dreams. In fact, that's why I'm in prison. Because of my interpretation of dreams. And this is what this is what Joseph said. Joseph said, "Tell your dreams to me." tell your dreams to me. I just believe that God has shown me. God has shown me what he's doing in your life and I will tell you what it is all about. And so, so the butler began to tell his dream and I'll just be, tell you this briefly. He was just saying, I, 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 just saw, I just saw three vines. I saw three vines and the three vines were budding and grapes came on the vines and I had the king's cup in my hand and grapes, the grape juice was going into the cup and I just don't understand. I just keep seeing the three. I keep seeing the three. I keep seeing the cup. I keep seeing the juice. I don't understand what it's all about. I could hear Joseph say, wait a minute, wait a minute. God is speaking. God is speaking. God is speaking. You know, you know, Joseph, Joseph really was listening to God. You know, you got to be careful now. God is speaking. God is speaking. God ain't always speaking. Don't, don't you listen to everybody who say, wait a minute, wait a minute. God is speaking. But, but, but with Joseph, God was speaking. And Joseph, Joseph said, I see it. I see it, butler. The three vines represent three days. Three days. And you, you saw the king's cup in your hand, and I know you were supposed to die in here, but I saw the cup and I saw the juice going in the cup. And Joseph said, in three days, you are going to have your old job back serving the king. The king's cup is gonna be in your hand again, mark my words, in three days. I know you're supposed to die in here, but in three days, you are going to have your old job back. Woo, you know, that would have been some of us say, ah, go. Well, you know, the baker, the baker got happy. The baker got happy. The baker, he got excited. He said, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Joseph. I had three in my dreams too. Thing like this is three days. I had three baskets on the top of my head. And the baskets, they were filled with all kind of assorted meats, every kind of meat that you could think of. And in the top basket, the birds were coming. And they were eating the meat out of the top basket. <laughs> so, so Joseph, tell me, tell me, Tell me what the dream is all about. And I, I could hear Joseph say, now, you, you really want to know now? I got to tell you the truth. Now. I can just tell you to go pray or I can tell you what, what God showed me. Oh, go ahead, tell me, tell me. Well, in three days, yes, the three baskets represent three days. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, three days. But the three baskets 
with assorted meats and birds were coming to eat out of the top basket, that simply means that in three days, the king's getting ready to hang you. And the birds are going to eat up your flesh. I could hear the baker say, I sure wish I'd have kept my mouth shut. At least I'd have had three more happy days. But he told him the truth. But then he had to go back to the butler and he said, listen, butler, I want to let you know now what I told you is the truth. Three days, you're going to have your old job back. And I just, I just need one favor from you, just one favor from you because I'm really not supposed to be in here. I haven't done anything wrong and you're getting ready to go back. You're going to have the king's ear. You're going to be the closest to the king because you're going to be bringing him his food. You're going to be bringing him his drink. All I'm asking you to do when you get back in three days, would you make mention of me to the king? Would you just tell the king that I'm not supposed to be in here? That's all I need you to do. Don't just go around shouting, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. I need you to make mention of me to the king. And I could hear the butler say, I got you, man, I got you. Don't worry about it, Joe. I get out of here three days, man. I'm going to tell the king I can't believe I'm getting out of here. If I get out of here, I got you covered, Joseph. But guess what? Just like some of us, we forget. You got to be careful when it goes well with you. Because look what happens. I want to, I want to show you in this last scripture how long it took the king's butler to remember Joseph. It's right here in Genesis 41 and 1. It says, and it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed and behold, he stood by the river. Now, I could stop right there. After two years, that's when Joseph remembered after two years and the only reason he remembered after two years was because the king started dreaming. And the king couldn't interpret his dream. The king was waking up. I don't understand this. He was sending for the magicians and the soothsayers. Somebody's got to tell me what this dream is all about. But nobody could tell him what the dream was all about. And you see, in this particular day, nobody would lie to you and say, the Lord showed me, the Lord showed me, if the Lord hadn't showed you. Because they already knew that if you lied to the king and that dream didn't come true, your head was going to be cut off. So if they didn't know, they said, no, Lord ain't showing me nothing. I, I, I don't know nothing. I I don't know nothing. But when the king started dreaming, that's when the butler said, wait a minute. Oh, man, I forgot all about it. How could I forget? Because this is the reason that I'm out. This man spoke into my life. He prophesied to me. I was supposed to be dead just like the baker died three days after he was in prison. I was supposed to be dead. But this man told me that I'd be right back with you, king. It's a man by the name of Joseph and this man, Joseph, he ain't supposed to be in jail because God's got something in him, on him, through him. This man is so gifted. His dreams come true. That's the man you need to talk to. How many of you know when God's got something for you, I don't care how he's got to get it to you. If he's got to get it to you through a dream, he's going to get it to you. I don't care if he's got to disturb you in the midnight hour. He'll disturb you in the midnight hour to get to you what belongs to you. Now, my final point, can't you see Joseph now? He's depressed. He's in prison. And I could see him on this last day 
saying, I'm tired now, Lord. I done helped everybody else. I tried to be a good son to my daddy. I was faithful to my daddy. I tried to love my brothers, and I wanted my brothers to love me. But look what they did to me. I ended up in a pit, sent to Egypt, became a slave. The boss's wife lied on me. I, I ended up in jail. I'm tired, Lord. I'm tired. Anybody ever get tired? I'm tired, Lord. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of helping everybody else, but it looks like nobody's helping me. I thought I heard God clearly. Oh, but did I miss you, Lord? Did I, did I, I know you said you was going to make a way for me. I know you said that my season was coming, but it looks like my season is not here. I think I'm talking to somebody tonight. You've been going through in your life like Joseph, and it seems like you're back is up against the wall. And just about the time when it looked like it was over for Joseph on this last day, here comes the jailer. He walks in. He walks in and he looks at Joseph and he says, Joseph, you're not going to believe this, but the king wants to see you. See, I, I know some of y'all don't get excited, but Joseph, he was just waiting for this word for a long time. The, the king wants to see me. Don't fool with me, jailer, because you know I've been waiting a long time. I just needed a word with the king. The king wants to see you. I could hear Joseph say, that's all I need. If I could just have a word with the king and the king listens to me, I know that there's going to be a change in my life. So now, look what happens. Joseph has breakfast on this last day in prison, but dinner in the palace. I just need you to look at somebody tell them just that quick. Just, just that quick. I, I know some of you, you may be bound right now, but I come to speak it in your life to let just that quick. Some of y'all think it's going to take God a long time to do what he's got to do, but I come to speak it tonight just that quick quick. I know you may get tired sometimes. I'm tired of helping everybody else. I even had something else to do tonight, but I came to participate in your dream. I'm here to tell you, baby, you better get ready for the palace because God sent me tonight to tell somebody the king wants to see you. I feel like preaching in this place, the king wants to see you. Somebody, God's getting ready to open up some doors. And God's getting ready to make a way. And God's getting ready to turn some things around. The king wants to see you. But if you want your dream, to come true. Just high five somebody, tell them, participate in somebody else's dream. Participate in somebody else's dream. Because while you participate in somebody else's dream, here comes the word the king wants to see you. The king wants to see you. So dreamers, dreamers, participate. In fact, you need to check with your bishop sometimes to say, how's things going, bishop? How you like your house? How do you like your car? How's your finance going? Because if it's good with you, guess who's next in line 
for a breakthrough. Woo! I speak it tonight. I come to participate. I, 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 I come to participate. So don't wait till the battle is over. I need somebody. Shout now. Shout now. Shout. Shout like you already got it. Shout like the dream you've been waiting on has already come true. Shout. 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 Is there anybody, is there anybody, you're glad about it? Yes, I came back just to say thank you for participating. I know it look crazy sometimes. What's that Paul Morton doing? Talking about bridging the gap between Baptist and Pentecost. But thank you for participating in my dream. Thank you for standing with me. Thank you. That's why I came tonight just to say thank you. Yes. Yes. And I believe God's going to turn it around. In fact, I speak healing in your body. I speak deliverance in your body. In the name of Jesus, I came to participate in the healing. You did it for me. Do it for him. Hey! Come on and praise him. Get up, Sunday. Get up, Sick at the bus Sunday. I feel victory. I feel. I feel victory. I feel. Victory, I feel victory. I feel it, 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 I feel it. Oh God. How to make your dreams come true. Stop listening to negative people. Negative people tell you, oh, you just listen to everything Bishop says. Everything Bishop said, he tell you how high to jump. You, I did tell you to jump. You say how high. Get away from negative folk. If they're negative, tell them, you ain't in my dream, baby. You ain't in my dream. My dream is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You may be seated, but you got to speak it in your life because your season is right here. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, Don't do it without me. I just need some worshipers if you're going to participate in what's about getting, what's getting ready to happen in your life. Just with the fruit of your lips, just begin to praise him. Begin to praise him, begin to praise him. Begin to praise him, begin to praise him. Lord, what is You're doing in this season. Please don't do it 
without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Yes. Don't do it without me. Now, come on, help me say, Lord, whatever you're doing in the sea, please don't do it without me. No, 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 no. Don't do it without me. Say like you mean it. Just touch the hem of your gun. Don't do it without me. I know everything will be all right. Don't do it without me. Yeah, yeah. Don't do it without me. Yeah, yeah. Don't do it without me. Said without the music, said. Don't do it without me. What the night <laughs> is gonna bring. Yes, 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 yes. It'll be all over <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Ain't no need to worry. <laughs> what the night. It's going to bring. (laughs) 
it'll be all over. <laughs> bye bye pain. Bye bye sickness. I need you to sit down for a moment. Tonight, many people miss out on the key to their success because you're so busy getting for yourself that you don't participate in somebody else's dream and you're wondering why the king don't want to see you. I am a living witness that when you participate in somebody else's dream, that's why you got to be careful who you walk over. You have to be careful who you misuse. church in New Orleans, go all the way back to Greater St. Stephen. A young boy that grew up in our church and they would try to push him away because he's always begging, you got a dollar rail, give me a dollar rail, give me a dollar. Well, get away from pastor, get away from him, you're worrying him. But I said, leave him alone, I see something in him. And he would always tell me, I'm going to be something one day, pastor, I'm going to be something one day. Then after Hurricane Katrina, he moved to Atlanta before we established a church in Atlanta. And I remember one of the biggest checks that he wrote at one time was $2 million. His name was Tyler Perry, and I thank God. You gotta be careful who you push away. when you participate in somebody else's dream. Now he's given millions and millions of dollars to our ministry. All because I participated in his dream. You don't know how God is gonna bless you. But if you wanna be blessed, you gotta stop being selfish. Joseph could have hid in a corner. He could have hid in the corner and said, I ain't helping nobody. He could have hid in the corner. Look, God, you said I was supposed to have this and that, and I'm supposed to be a ruler, and this is that. I ain't helping this jailer. I ain't helping Potiphar. But he participated. And I know this is a celebration all month, and you're doing that, and I know Sundays you celebrate. But tonight, I just need you to participate in his dream. When I tell you to participate in his dream and you can see that he's dressed well, God has been good to both of them. And I tell people in my ministry, don't wait to bless me when you think I'm broke. Talk, sir. Talk. Cause a good chance you ain't gonna see that no more. Don't wait Do you think I got run over shoes and Holes in my suit. You gotta learn how to bless people who are already blessed. That's where your blessing is going to come in. When you seed into somebody that God's got his hand on, that's where he's gonna bless you. I just need those tonight that's just gonna give a $25 seed. I, and you know what this seed is for? I need you to put this seed down on your dream coming true. Now, now if you don't have a dream, don't even worry about it tonight. And some of you, if your main dream is for a bicycle, then you give a dollar. Give a dollar tonight. Say, I'm just believing God for my new bicycle. But some of you got some big dreams. And I want you to trust God. I want you to believe God tonight because God's about to do it for you. He's going to do it for you in a special way. 
we got to believe and we got to know that God is going to do it. Why don't you look at your neighbor in case they missed it, look at them and tell them, participate, participate. They rolled their eyes at you. If they rolled their eyes at you, tell them, oh, you ain't ready. You ain't ready to participate. You have to participate. I got some dreams on the back burner. And I know the only way that my dreams can come true, I got to participate. God blesses you tonight. This is, whew. Aren't you glad that God still has this man of God alive so he can even experience this tonight? He's alive. You got to participate while he's alive. If he'd have died and had no insurance and said, need everybody to give $25, you'd be all up here crying. Here's 150. Here's 200. Oh, my pastor gone. He's gone. Well, he's alive. Participate. Because God kept him here for a reason. The blessings I speak it over your life. The blessing that I'm speaking over your life tonight is the king wants to see you. You ain't got to wait to 2015. But before this year is over. It may look like you're in your prison now. It may look like you're bound now. But God is about to turn it around. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, I speak it in this place. I don't have time for gimmicks and games. But I learned a long time ago when you seed into kingdom work, when you seed into the man of God, into the woman of God, oh God, you promised to bless. So tonight we will bring our seeds. Doesn't matter if we're in our prison or in our palace, we still need some blessings from you. Every door that needs to be opened is going to open. I speak it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Do we have some containers up here? Because I want those of you tonight, we're going to participate in the dream. And you have that $25 seed. Let's just show Bishop tonight that we thank God for what he's doing in this season. And I'm just believing that God is going to do it in a special way tonight. Amen. Again, we certainly thank Amen, each and everyone. Amen. Amen. Call us tonight to be just such a marvelous celebration. Amen. We thank God. Amen. For you. Amen. Every one of God's people and the believers. Amen. All of pastors, friends. Amen. We just certainly honor you. We just thank you for making this evening great. Amen. Let's receive the honoree of the night. Amen. Bishop Stephen Jerome Bennett, Senior. Amen. As he comes. Man of God, we certainly welcome you. Amen. Lady Valerie Bennett. Amen. We love you. Come on, let's receive the man of God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, let's give God praise for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Can somebody just give him a hallelujah? hallelujah? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just so excited to be here tonight. Amen. It's just such an honor to stand before you as Lady Valerie Bennett and being married to the King. Ain't that something? I don't want to be like Potter's first wife, but I want to be a good king's wife. And right. It's just been a wonderful 37 years that we've been married. And I thank God for that. And I thank God for 25 years in ministry. So most of our married life has been with House of Prayer and Praise. And we've been in public and we've raised our children. And when I started, 25 years ago, my baby girl was one year old, and we had six children, and I was a first lady with diaper bag and a first lady hat, and trying to do it, amen, and it just wasn't, didn't seem like it was fitting very well, but I thank God that I was able to walk alongside of my husband, and now he's Bishop Stephen J. Bennett, and the ministry has grown, hallelujah, the children have grown, and I've met so many great people, and I've seen so many of you have your dreams come true. And while I was walking and participating in his dream, 
I was able to see your dreams unfold. So I honor God tonight, and I thank each and every one of you for coming to celebrate with us. Amen. And we're looking for 25 or more. Amen. More, more years. I don't know. What God going to, Bishop might not want all those years, but I'm going to stay with him. Whatever God says, I'm going to be right by his side. Let's praise God for Bishop. Amen. Again, want to thank you guys so much for coming and sharing with us. That was a good word, wasn't it? You know, that, that, was, that was a good word. It was just good to have uh, Bishop Morton in the house. Amen. It was good. And uh, thank you for 37 years. I, I really do. I thank you. And certainly thank you for these, especially these last five years you've been with me. You know, you could have just threw me in, a, in, in, in the shower and cut the cold water on. <laughs> and just left me there, you know. But I'm so glad you didn't. I'm, I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad you did, girl. Amen. Belle got my medicine in her purse. She be taking care of me. I'm so glad, you know. Amen. That's why you got to get a good wife. You just don't want a short skirt. You want a good wife. You know, amen. You want a good husband because as life proceeds, you don't know what's down the road, you know. And when God give you somebody good, amen, you can weather the storm, amen. So, again, I thank you all so much. Dr. Mormon, thank you so much for coming. You you all right with me, I tell you. Expect all you pastors are all right with me, amen. And uh, we certainly thank you.